Well, hello everybody. We've been working on a 48 TE 20 Ferguson tracker. And we bought this thing just a little while back. And it ran when we got it. It didn't run right. Um, and we started out from scratch with it. The plug wires messed up on it. It had a plug wire that just totally broke off, stick down the stripper cap. Someone has, uh, you got to watch things when you buy tractors. There's no telling what you'll be getting a hold of. When we bought this thing, someone had put a Ford distributor in this thing. It's supposed to have either a, a, a Delco Remy or a Lucas. And we it wound up has, having a uh, distributor in We're not sure what Ford it fits. The, the cap rotor points and everything fit an 8 in, a 4 cylinder 2 in, a, uh, a 601, a 801. But anyway, long story short, uh, we've been trying to straighten this thing out, and we're just about to get it straightened out. We bought it, and it had a pop in the exhaust. We couldn't get rid of it. It just seemed like it idled up real fast, and it, it started easy. And we, we've been trying to adjust the carburetor, and I think we got it all close now. And I'll tell you what, we're going to let somebody bust this thing off. This is my, this so red, and uh, he's going to bust this thing off for us and run it down the street as a test run we have not test run this thing since we did this adjusting on it but we we've straightened the timing out on it we think it had a pop in the exhaust and we got rid of the pop and uh slowed it down it still runs real good but we've tuned it up with new distributor cap new rotors new uh uh plug wires new plugs and uh the only thing we got left to do we need to service our air cleaner and we got somebody running around here he's i don't know what he's trying to do but uh, he's trying to tie something up back here so it doesn't drag. And uh, Fuzzy, when you want to, you can go ahead and engage the PTO after you start it and then pick up the arm so they don't dig in the dirt. You ready to go give it a, a try? Oh, yes. Okay. Go ahead and just, just pop it once. And it starts that easy. Well, anyway... Get, engage the PTO. You got your PTO in? Well, make sure it's in neutral. He's out on the clutch. Try to see if, see if the uh, lift will lift. Does lift go up? Okay. Dan will help him with the uh, PTO real quick. Now, is it going up? Raise the lift. Is it up? Put, put the clutch in. Now try it. Is the lift up? All right, lift's up. Well, this is an expert tractor mechanic, I mean, uh, and, and tractor driver. We're gonna let him test drive his thing. Go ahead and, uh, Take off with it, buddy. Let's see. Doesn't that tractor sound good? Man, that thing sounds like a sewing machine. It doesn't have a popping exhaust or nothing. Watch out for all that stuff back here. Go ahead and take off with it. Gen ladies and gentlemen, that is exactly the way a Ferguson tractor is supposed to sound with a fresh tune-up on it and fresh timing set. And he's gonna drive it down the road and, and bring it right back. But I'm gonna tell you about it real quick. These Ferguson tractors are good little tractors. They're easy to work on. You, the first thing to do is go buy a service manual. They're still available. They come straight from Harry Ferguson when the tractor was made in 1948. You can buy them on Amazon. And uh, the little old things, uh, I mean, it's just that they, they are a great little tractor if you if you tweak on them and give them a little tender loving care. And uh, listen, that thing run. It's just doing what it's supposed to do. He's just trying it out for the first time. He ain't gonna really try to rev it up hard or nothing. 
and uh, we're mainly just seeing how it'll run. It sounds real good so far, but the best money you can ever spend is get you a service manual from Harry First, and they tell you all about the gas valves. They tell you about the makeup of the distributor, uh, how to adjust the valves. Uh, they put, it's in plain, common English, and it tells you exactly what you need to do. There's no guesswork involved. And if you get you a, a, a service manual on these things, most of this stuff can be done with a screwdriver, a uh, set of feeder gauges, uh, just an open end set of wrenches, you know, the smallest, minimalist hand tools. Now, you can get, get involved in other things with it and uh, need some tools. But anyway, anyway, what I'm saying, the average guy can work on these things. There are no, no computers about them. And they'll do what you need them to do. They'll plow for you. They'll bush hog for you. Uh, so anyway, the whole thing I'm getting with uh, on this, they're a great little tractor. And if you need to buy them, you can get them relatively cheap. This one here we looked at on, it had been overhauled, but it had a few little things wrong with it. And we went ahead and painted it. And it's not painted right. These tractors came from the factory gray. And they were first built by Henry Ford in 1939 from a handshake agreement with Harry Ferguson. They made the agreement in 1938. They started building in 39. And they were all sent, they were sent, a lot of them that sent to England, the United States and everything, they're all Ford Ferguson nine ends. And the problem of them with, was Second World War popped out. And you couldn't get the things sent across the ocean because all of the vessels that you shipped them on was tied up supplying U.S. forces and other military uh, needs. And uh, so anyway, production more or less was halted except for in the United States. Harry Ferguson started his own plant in 1946 after the Second World War in Covington, England. And he started, uh, uh, he, he started building these things over there. In Covington, England, he built the TE-20, and it had multiple varieties. I'm not going to go into the different models. He even built a diesel one, had a Perkins diesel in it. These had uh, Continental Z120 engines in them, and if you take care of them, don't overwork them, they'll last a long time. Well, anyway, the, uh, uh, there was a handshake agreement between Harry Ferguson and Henry Ford that went bad, and when... Uh, Henry F uh, Ford's son took over, Henry Ford II. The handshake agreement was dissolved. Ensued in a big lawsuit at the time. I won't go into details on that. Harry Ferguson decided that he was going to start building his own tractors in the United States. And he put in a plant in, of all places, Detroit, Michigan, right there in Harry, uh, Henry Ford's backyard. And he started building TO-20s and TO-30s, and the TE stands for Tractor England, and the TO stands for Tractor Overseas. Well, they took and uh, imported a lot of these TEs, there's over 500,000 of them made, and they started importing these little TEs into the country until they get the TO production up. Whoa, that's good. Back it up just a little. But anyway, they uh, back it up. Back on up so I can see you. Back up a little bit more. Whoa, that's good, that's good. You can shut her off right there. How did it run? Did you have any problems? No. I believe we got her licked now. Well, anyway, they uh, started importing a lot of these tractors into Canada from England, and they also imported some of them into the United States until Harry Ferguson could get his production up on the TO-20s. So there, you will find TE-20s, TO-20s, TO-30s, and several variants uh, all here in the United States. So it's, you have to be careful when you buy these things. 
and there's a, a serial number tag up there by the steering steering wheel to tell you made in Coventry, or it'll have TO on it. Sometimes the serial numbers are disfigured and you can't hardly see them. That was part of our problem on this. And they got a, a serial number on the side engine also, and the early ones didn't correspond, but the later ones did. It had the serial number on the side of the motor plus up on the tag. But anyway, I'm just, this thing ain't painted right. We, we like it like this. It's sort of Ford blue and light gray. We uh, left the wheels, uh, the wheels were white with red hubs when we got them. And we're going to uh, put a flag on this thing, 4th of July, and uh, ha have a yard on run out of it. Well, anyway, I appreciate y'all watching. I hope y'all have learned something from this. And uh, till next time, uh, keep a watch out. We're going to have other, other stories about our implements. Uh, we're going to have stories about uh, other projects we're done, uh, some gardening videos and everything else. And I appreciate y'all watching. Appreciate you paying attention. And until next time, adios over now.